to you once again and welcome to Visionaries Lounge. Have you ever met someone who was clearly created to be doing exactly what they're doing? That's my next guest for this evening. She walks into the room and it lights up. She has got this infectious laughter. She manages to make us all feel entertained and loved at the same time. She is a legend and a veteran of her own in the television industry in South Africa. Omama Ulilien Dube, good evening to you and welcome. Good evening, Mdanami Nyabong. Thank you so much. Yes. Mm. Mam Lillian, I'm almost finding it difficult to keep a straight face because you are just someone who is bubbly, full of love, full of laughter. <laughs> I'm wondering, Guti, what were you like as a child? Oh, I'm sure growing up. Very, very much. If anything went wrong at school, I was blamed, even if I wasn't <laughs> there, because I've always been this chachara child. <laughs> Mom and dad were from Lesotho. My mother was uh, domestic, my father a minor and I was raised by my grandmother from hell. You know, we used to go, like our schools in Lesotho used to visit other schools mm -hmm. far away from my school. And then all the children, the parents would uh, uh, make them eat umbolo, yes, dumpling, yes. and um, umleko, mm -hmm. uh, 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 organic chicken. Me now, I would have pap and salt mm. as my bad course. <laughs> and then, thank God I was a little bit stupid in a nice way because I liked dancing and jiving and singing. So when we got to that school, I would be singing and everybody would be impressed. And I then can't when they that. put their food, I put out my pap and salt because that's all I have yeah. and eat their meat. It's only <laughs> later I realized that actually they didn't like it, but I never <laughs> knew at that time. Mm. So you grew as this I, I had to fight child, yeah. for myself. So after the schooling, after things start to come right, mm. and then you feeling loved by mom again, a little mm -hmm. bit more secure. But when she also was very strict. Can oh. you imagine? She was a nine, and she's writing her wrongs through me. Oh. <laughs> and then yes, now yes. you must be perfect okay. because she couldn't attain and that, that perfection. That made me even naughtier because now I was fighting for my place. Mm. So she sent me to Lesotho to do my grade eight when I was enjoying myself at Inkaman. But because I had a boyfriend in Soweto, so to make sure I don't get married at an early age, sent me to Lesotho again. When did the acting, that's what I want to know. The when acting, did the acting thing the come acting about? The acting from school, I used to act, but it wasn't a career then. Mm. But whenever we did a literature, thank God in Lesotho we did literature, even though I didn't go to school that much. I only ended up in a nice school, junior certificate. But I'm telling you, we did a literature. When you got to Joburg, what happened? When I got to Joburg, my mother, I didn't have an ID because I went to Lesotho. It was tough, Mdanam. Yeah. I was given 72 hours to leave South Africa. Mau, because during Mau those Shubut, days... I was born here. They yeah, didn't uh, want to uh, because my mother sold our house. So I was in nobody's house permit. And then if you had relatives or friends who are keeping you in their house, if they are fed up with you, enough with you, or the neighbors don't like the people you are with, mm. they just phone Abu Kogasam. How old are you at this time? I, I'm sure I was in my 20s. Mm. I started working as a domestic in Linden. What? And I saw my friends working. Some of them were not working. I didn't have an ID. And I used to yearn to have an ID. And then I, the funny thing is I worked uh, for a policeman right under their nose yes and did they know at this time the policeman i worked was very for mr albert was okay. very kind oh. so they didn't mind that i didn't have an mm. id i will not tell you what used to happen during the day when they were not there because some white people knew that this man was kind then they would come during the day and say pass i don't have it and you know what they'll ask for mm. i won't say it it's a national tv yeah, it was that bad. My son, who was 12 at the time, <laughs> said uh, uh, he used to like changing stations. I used to leave my radio on LM Radio. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know LM Radio. Mm -hmm. 
So I would come back from work and say, who's changed my stations? And my son used to say, you lose out. I said, why? You must play Sesotho Radio. Yeah. Why? They've got auditions at Auckland Park. And so I said, so I'm working. I was working for Greater Men's then, which was a, a, a departmental shop. She said, because they want people who are going to act. And I said, why should I go? He says, whenever I go to the movies, because as a youngster, he used to love yeah. going to the movies. The people that are acting, they remind me so much of you. You are kidding. Through From God. the mouths of babes. Yes, and to please my son, I went for the auditions. He saw yeah. in you what you couldn't see in yourself. All right, I knew. Yeah. But I didn't know I can make a career of it. And already I was working, so why would I want to mm. act when I'm working? And it's a department store now, and so I'm it's not a domestic And I'm looking glamorous and I'm yes. smart and yes. then why both? So my son said, okay, Namako. you must go and get your scripts on such and such a day. I remember on that particular day, it was a holiday, so I could afford not to go to work mm. and come here. I remember the person that interviewed me was Mr. Roots. Mm. He was very impressed. But Kifuwe Mubuhuban, who was also working here, said, no, 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 this is a Zulu production, a Sutu, <laughs> a Sutu production. We yeah. don't want Zulus here because my name is Dube. Yes. So three months went by without a callback. So Mr. Roots insisted and said, Kifu, I respect you, but mm. please let's call this lady. This I want you to, to, to meet with her. He was so sorry because he fetched me from Soweto and found that I'm from the yes. same place, Lesotho, where he comes from and my suit is perfect and all that. So um, I started with dubbing. I was so excited. Mm, mm. I'd imagine that your star then quickly rose. Yes, my Because darling. your talent is evident for everybody to see. I'm sure Nababata left, right, and left, center. Right, and jobs since, in jail. Since, since, even now, Wanaka, I choose, I pick and choose. I am so blessed and, th and I thank God for that. Mm. Mm. Why did I not do it? I don't know if you know that on the 21st of September, I had a mastectomy because mm -hmm. my cancer came back eight years later. And then on the 30th, I turned 70. But I'm telling you, the following week I was at work. <laughs> no, 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 no. I want to talk to you about that. Yes. And I also want to speak to you about the secret to your longevity. Yes. Because as we speak, you are still very much active in uh, the television industry. I want to get those nuggets of success from you in just a moment. Be sure to join us for all that and more. Coming back now, now. Welcome back. It's so good to have you with us. Our visionary this evening needs very little introduction. In fact, none whatsoever. She's a legend in South Africa's television screens. Lillian Dube. But hola, my old lady. Cameraman, how are you? Hola, 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 Lillian, you have achieved so much in your career. Not only did you excel and become a success as an individual, but you made sure that you raise up other artists coming up after you. I remember this because growing up, my mother used to always say, you know, when I'm singing and dancing with my siblings, famous. And that was the buzz around Soweto because you didn't take your agency to, no, no, to no. Houghton. Yeah. You kept it right there, Elokshin. Besides, my sweetheart, the reason I opened my own agency is because people used to see me on TV and they thought I was a miracle. And they also wanted to be, and I said, no, no, no. I want them also to be on TV. So mm -hmm. I started casting agency. I think black people are actors by birth. Mm. 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 I mean, you have to lie to the police, and nope. <laughs> <laughs> lie to the employers. <laughs> oh, one was late, and they didn't yeah. know what O1. Oh, you know that O1 oh, is a train, yeah, eh? yeah, yeah. yeah, and the dress was and long. And then now, and we are born to when we are I was shapa shapa, I was born to get out of the sticky situation. 
We, we were used to lying. Mm. Lying is another form of acting, I'm sure, isn't it? Because you have first you have to convince yourself. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And then believe it and then make someone yes. else believe it. Yes. Uku Sevenza together, I go and Okuban Legi, Ligulum Sevens. Wooten in a nomadil in Sevenzega Shekako. You speak about a, a period in our history that was very dark, mm -hmm. very macabre, mm -hmm. and we speak about it very lightheartedly now because, you know, hindsight. Mm. But what was it like as a professional then? Were there those moments that, um, you know, you look back on and you say, being an actress then? Mm. For me, Sorry. like I say, I was very fortunate. Mm. But before we go into that, I've got to tell you this because you will never ask me because you don't know. Remember, even though you were young, I know I don't, maybe you were not born, uh, they used to cut off electricity. Mm. And the boys would reconnect and they would say, you must cook during the day. They say to the parents, you must cook during the day. In the evening, you must put heavy blankets on the windows mm. so that the police, because they used to pat yeah. patrol, don't see that you, your, your lights are on. So if you went to any house in Soweto during those days, you'd find them looking like this. They've hidden the TV under the table. So we used to watch the TV. <laughs> under the under table? The table. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, because we don't want the reflection. You had to make a plan. Yes, so that the police can... Hey, it was fun. It's funny. It was sad, but it was fun. Yeah. Talking about an enemy and, and, and how people come around to, to fight against that enemy, mm. I want to talk about the cancer now. Mm -hmm. it, you first got news that you had cancer. 2007. 2007, yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. Tell me what that initial shock was like. Hey, I was so sorry that I got cancer because when my friend's husband was dying of cancer, he was owing me a lousy 250. He came early in the morning to my house to say, I've come to pay you because in six months' time I'll be dead. And I said, I, I, w I would have collected 250 for you or even more. Why did you have to bring it back? And then he started uh, buying his wife a new house. They used to stay oh. at school, Dipola, Wabasa, a Fulbright Park. Yeah. Suburbs, but I don't want to visit him me from Soweto when I am almost dying. Taught his children how to drive and bought his wife a car mm. and then threw a party to all his friends. Mm. We went there and had fun. He even chose where he was going to be buried and he even chose a tombstone. So I didn't realize that God was listening. I said, I think I like this disease. Whoa, <laughs> uh oh. Be so when they said I've got for. cancer, I said, um, I asked for it. Mm. I'm not sorry, though. Mm. Because through my illness, I've been able to save so many people's lives. Yeah, yeah. There are those who've gone, but they've left with dignity. Mm. I still want to tell you, Mdaname, through Soul City. Yeah. Soul City saved my life. Remember Sister Bettina Konozo? Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> through uh, Soul City, which was... Uh -oh. uh, Educating, you mm, remember? I do. We did health education, mm. social uh, education. I was in the habit of self-breast examination, and I went for yearly mammograms. So I was able to pick up my own lump. Yes. So thank God for that, because early detection early and detection. early treatment saves lives. <laughs> Fast forward that initial bout, if I can call it that for lack of yes. a better word. Mm. Eight years later, yes. you then discover that it has reoccurred. I'm telling you, my child, I was in, the, in a cruise. Mm. You know, when you just feel something, I knew that this is unusual, but I didn't want to spoil anybody's mood. I came back in August. I had to do a beautiful, be uh, uh, it's, it's amazing, about cancer to uh, a, a movie called The Chemo Club, wow. written by Tandy Brewer, who herself is a cancer survivor, who sh uh, and she wrote it for her own mother who died of cancer. And I had such fun with Brumelda. And even there, that pain still came. Mm. Immediately I finished, I phoned my uh, people who do mammograms. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. I phoned them. I said, 
I want to come for my mammogram. They said, Monsieur, you are due in September. I said, no. I can't wait. I want to do it now. Yeah. Because I can feel. I went there and it was confirmed. <sighs> and this time it wasn't a lump. It was just that sensation. So that's why I always encourage people to please know your body. Mm. Do you feel victorious as a cancer survivor? Hey, you can say jive. Yeah. Like, it came back eight years yeah. later. I don't know whether it will come back, but I'm telling you, I always say all of us we only have this day. Mm. So one of the beautiful things about cancer is that after cancer, you don't sweat the small stuff. Yeah. Every day is a bonus and you enjoy it and you use it to the full. That is why when I'm supposed to be lying at home in bed, I'm here talking to you. God has been so wonderful to me, how I made it. And the only thing I can really thank God is by helping others. Mm. And today it's worse. Our children, little children have children. Mm -hmm. Those children are not mm -hmm. looked after. It breaks my heart. And unless we as parents say this is the way, where will these children go? Indeed. Mam Lillian, ke o ratela gore o rata batho. Ke ba rata I love that about you. <laughs> you are doing a very good uh, uh, um, twin. Now without uh, any education, I mean, it is education, but I always tell people education doesn't end in the classroom. Mm, it was in formal learn, uh, education. When I formal. listen to you reading the news, you talk, I say, oh, he beats us so hard, hard gesture, hard determine, or determine. Yes, and then I learn, he puts on the and then bar determine, one of my Okay. Because so you, you learn. You're not re determined. To examine. You more eh. after this break. So eh. it's not our language, sweetheart, but you yeah. can try. Indeed. Eh. Indeed. So I keep learning every day and I'll never stop learning. And we want to learn more exactly. about what your future has in store. Yeah. So be sure to stay with us, be determined, Rahutla, just now. After examining, <laughs> examine. Welcome back and thanks again for joining us. We continue our discussion with a great visionary indeed who is supposed to epitome of success in the television industry and who remains ever so humble and loving. Mam Lillian, where to next for you? I mean, you mentioned your soul city. What, what, what next? I can remember you know that uh, I created Squeezers. <laughs> Three hundred thousand. It can trade accounting yaka. One hundred. No. 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 And Maud was my favorite. Mm. And I told myself, when I'm in my 60s, I want to produce a, a comedy show like that, a sitcom. And I love it. So right now, we are writing for season four, and you are going to laugh. Wow. But you love comedy. Yes. Yeah, you love laughing. Uh, 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 laughter is medicine, my yeah. sweetheart. It is medicine. I don't want to lie. Something else that's quite remarkable about you, Omakona Jootli. You know, mm. you, you dabble in the producing, in the mm. this, in the that, and that. Mm. Was that a conscious effort to say, I want to make sure that I'm skilled in a number of disciplines in the industry? Yes, because if you only concentrate on one thing, you must multitask, Mwanaka. And I remember a long time ago, one producer was asking me if I had a, a fax machine. Mm. I said, wait, 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 wait. Uh, some, if something is burning, I'll phone you back. Uh. Then I phoned a friend of mine and said, what is a fax machine? Oh. Then she explained. I said, no. Otherwise, mm. I was going to say yes. Thank yes. God. Yes, <laughs> because you usually say yes for yes. everything. And if I this yes, time you called a friend. She could have asked me. <laughs> What's your a fax a number? <laughs> And then door. Give yeah. me that. What has been your most favorite um, character where you just said, I, I can do this for free, this character? Soul City. Mm. 
because of the education. Mm. Because I always tell people of the all the ills of apartheid, uh, depriving the black child education is the worst. Killing, we are all going to die anyway. I can see that. Mm. Education. Today, we are in a mess because of ignorance. You, you're a bit of an advocate as well, undercover. If I had gone to school, yeah. my teacher used to say that. Yeah. Yes, I want to lift as I rise mm. and to speak for people, but people must also do things for themselves. Mm. I hate poverty because I learned long ago that it is self-made. I mean, if I believe in something, I will go and do it. And then, even if you don't know how, you'll mm. ask, there have been people before you. Don't be afraid to say, I want to do this, help me. Mam Lillian, if you could ask people to remember you for something, how would you want to be remembered? Say one day you choose to retire, or one day you decide, I know, Mishap, uh, how do you want to be remembered? I want to be remembered as someone who's made a difference in other people's lives, hence the foundation of uh, celebrities for good causes. And then, mm. I would make sure that once a month, they go and clean a hospital mm. and see if they'll still do that. Mm. Finally, now that we're talking about you've worked and you're still working, what more needs to be done outside of work for you? What is it that you'd like to do? You spoke about that cruise, yeah, or Ocean I, I, Oasis. I, I, I'm what do you still fortunate. want to do? I'm very fortunate. I, I, every year I see a new country. Yeah. I'm having a fantabulous life. And besides, I take myself on holiday. Mm -hmm. Every year, I see a new country. You go back whole next time. No, 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 you must work hard <laughs> for it. <laughs> oh, nothing for Mahala. <laughs> I'm on my nothing own. Nothing <laughs> for Mahala, my sweetheart. Oh. It is better when you've worked for it, then you appreciate yeah, it. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much for I allowing you. us to just you take a peek into your life. ask me about my beautiful grandchildren. Please, can you tell me about your beautiful grandchildren before we go? I also Sadie <laughs> is doing commercial <laughs> law at UCT, uh, and my little boy is going into high school mm. at uh, Bishop Baven. Those are good schools, sweetheart. Mm. And that's why I'm still working, because Ukulisi. I want the best for them. Uh, and it's okay, all so about education. We're adding to the list not only a pioneer in the television industry, not only a phenomenal philanthropist and an advocate for cancer awareness, but also a proud grandmother. Oh. I trust you've enjoyed this conversation. Let's uh, do it all over again with some other fantastic visionary next week. Good night. God bless you. Thank you. It was such a pleasure. I feel so good. Please don't be afraid of hard work. It has never killed anyone. Thank you and good night. <laughs>